Her father was known as the Mad King. But could Daenerys be the Mad Queen? Hi everyone, this is Robert. Welcome to In Deep Geek, particularly if you're a first time viewer. Please do consider subscribing if you enjoy the video. We often think of Daenerys as being the rightful Targaryen queen across the water, mother of dragons and freer of slaves. We marvel at her single-mindedness and cheer her on as she slowly grows from effectively being a sex slave to heading up the largest invasion fleet Westeros has ever seen. But even through this, we have to recognise that she has achieved most of this by force, not through careful diplomacy. Her default reaction to obstacles is often, if not always, violence, death, destruction. She seemingly allows no opposition, and cares little if innocent people die as a result of her actions. So should we be cheering her on, or praying for her comeuppance? As always, this is not a matter of just labelling her good or evil. It is more nuanced than that. But let's start with her family, the Targaryens. Ever since Aegon the Conqueror invaded Westeros with his sisters and dragons, forcing all opponents to kneel or be destroyed, the Targaryens have had a reputation for being, well, mad. Their housewords of fire and blood summarise well how others see them, and indeed how they see themselves. They are the last of the great Valyrian dragon-riding families, and will answer any threat with strength. Their desire to remain pure, untainted by other families, has led to generations, centuries even, of incest. Brothers marrying sisters, and a very, very concentrated gene pool. So we might expect this to lead to some concentration of genetic traits. Jaehaerys II, father of the Mad King, said once to Barrison Salmi that madness and greatness were two sides of the same coin. Whenever a Targaryen was born, he said, the gods tossed a coin in the air and the world held its breath. This is not an exaggeration, for in recent years the Targaryens have had more than their fair share of mad kings and mad princes. Daenerys' father ordered the burning of King's Landing. Her brother became so obsessed with the idea that he, and then that his son, was the prince that was promised, that he seems to have plunged an entire continent into civil war, condemning thousands to death, homelessness or starvation, just to fulfil a prophecy. And Viserys, her older brother, never seemed remotely like the kind of man you want ruling the Seven Kingdoms. In fact, when Jaehaerys talked about the gods flipping a coin, he was actually being quite generous. The recent history of mental instability in the Targaryens is much more than 50-50. But it's all too easy to just brand someone, or in this case an entire family, as mad, without actually thinking about what we mean by that. For the Targaryens, there do seem to be two traits that crop up quite a few times. Firstly, an obsessiveness with a single subject, like Aegon V's obsession with bringing back dragons, or Rhaegar's with the Prince Who Has Promised prophecy. And secondly, a propensity to use violence as a first resort, like Aerys II in wanting to burn them all, or Viserys in beating Danny. Often, for the Targaryens, both of these traits are connected to dragons and fire. It should also be noted that neither of these traits, self-obsession or a propensity to violence, are rare in Westeros. There are very few characters in Game of Thrones that do not suffer from either of these character flaws. In fact, the real factor that separates Targaryens from everyone else is that their genetic predispositions to self-absorption and violence are easily magnified by the fact that Targaryens are usually in positions of power. If Daenerys, for example, were a merchant or a priest, it wouldn't matter so much whether she had a short fuse. It's the fact that she has dragons that can cause untold damage, and that her obsession is to become queen that means that we should care so much about her mental well-being. So, although we shouldn't quickly bandy around accusations of insanity, 
or even worse, conflate a history of mental ill health with being bad or evil, it is worth seeing whether Danny shares the native Targaryen traits to obsess over a single objective and to show a disregard for human life. And also, given the fact that some of her forebears seem to lose their sanity only later in life, whether her character arc seems to be taking her there. When we first meet Daenerys, it's hard not to root for her. Beaten and bullied by her brother, she is then sold into a culture she doesn't know or understand, and forcibly married to a man whose language she doesn't even speak. Despite this, she grows as a person, learning to stand up for herself and for others that she sees as being trodden down by circumstance. She intervenes to prevent the Dothraki from raping villagers, for example. And just when she is starting to feel some love and affection for her husband and her unborn child, it is all ripped from her, and she has to start again. As I said, it is hard not to feel sympathetic towards her. It is at some time around here, however, that her obsession with retaking the Iron Throne starts to take hold. And as her dragons grow, she relies more and more on them, and fire, and destruction, as a means of resolving conflict. She executes people without trial, like the wise masters in Meereen, for example, and burns people alive without warning when they have something she wants. These are not the actions of a well-balanced leader. But at the same time, her compassion for the oppressed also seems to be growing over the years. She prioritises freeing slaves and seems to put a lot of effort into governing Marine with compassion and wisdom. So, which is the real Daenerys? George R. R. Martin has said on several occasions that he considers the only thing worth writing about is a human heart at conflict with itself. And we know that he is not a fan of creating easy to categorise good guys and bad guys, so we should expect Daenerys to be a complex character. And this is, I think, where Daenerys the TV show character is at. Her undeniable impulse to destroy, being in conflict with her also undeniable impulse to care for the oppressed. At the moment, this balance is being secured by her listening to wise advice from her courtiers. For example, she would have happily ridden Drogon over to Yunkai and Astapor and raised them to the ground at the end of Season 6, if it hadn't been for Tyrion telling her not to, because of all the innocent lives that would have been lost. Increasingly, it seems to be a matter of her base instincts being balanced by her advisor's wise counsel. And there are signs that in the books, there seems to be an even darker twist to her character. In A Dance with Dragons, Danny spends a long time in Marine, governing the city. And she seems to bend over backwards to try to ensure peace. She marries a man she doesn't love, allows the reopening of the fighting pits that she objects to, and even orders the imprisonment of her own dragons. But when she flies off on Drogon and is away from her advisers and the day-to-day cares of ruling a city, her other impulses kick in. She has fever dreams in the Dothraki Sea. In one of them, she hears Quaith say, Remember who you are, Daenerys. The dragons do. Do you? I know that some have suggested that this means that she isn't who she thinks she is, that she isn't a Targaryen. But I think it means the opposite. The dragons know who she is. She gave birth to them. They treat her as their mother. She is a Targaryen. Fire and blood. But she has forgotten what that means. Targaryens are conquerors of Westeros, not rulers of Essos. They are warmongers, not peacetime rulers. They do not compromise. For those who want to dig deeper into Daenerys' character development in A Dance with Dragons, I would highly recommend reading a series of short essays on the Miranese Blot blog about Danny's time in Marine that set out how Danny made compromise after compromise in trying to rule the city, and has finally reached a point at the end of the book where she has rejected this and reverts to the fire and blood approach of her heritage. This is interesting not just because of the textual analysis, but because George R. R. Martin praised the essays for, in his words, getting it. 
I'll put a link in the descriptions. But you might say she wants to break the wheel. She wants to end the bloodshed of the Game of Thrones. Yes, but let's take a moment to be clear on what Danny envisages when she says that. She sees the wheel as being the infighting between the different noble houses, one on top and then another. She wants to end that by reinstating Targaryen rule and preventing any other noble house from challenging it. As always, her positive desire to end misery for the people of Westeros seems to be being matched by her insistence that it has to be her in charge. And let's face it, there is very little evidence to suggest that she finds the task of governing to be one she is comfortable with, or one that she is particularly good at. In Marine, in the books, she becomes increasingly frustrated at the compromises needed as a ruler, and in the show, once she has gone, we see Tyrion and Varys take a walk around the city to discover people starving on the streets and an open rebellion against her rule. The two cities she had conquered before Meereen, Yunkai and Astapor, both swiftly reverted back to their previous rulers once she had gone. In other words, she doesn't even seem to think about setting in place effective ongoing governance arrangements, which is pretty much basic for any ruler. So we have someone who has focused her life on one thing, attaining the Iron Throne, but she has to realise that she might not enjoy the experience of rulership if she achieves it, and she might not actually be any good at it. But still, her obsession drives her on. There will be two crucial moments, I think, over the next two books and series that will show which side of Daenerys' character will win out. Firstly, it will be when she is confronted by the threat posed by the White Walkers. This is, without doubt, an existential threat to humanity, and continuing an evasion after she is made aware would not only drain resources from where they are needed most, but also endanger the lives of everyone in Westeros. The second important moment for Daenerys will be when she discovers, as she surely will eventually in the show, that Jon Snow is Rhaegar's son, meaning that he is the rightful Targaryen heir, not Daenerys. If she continues her obsessive pursuit of the Iron Throne then, it will prove that it is motivated by a lust for power, not for justice. The contrast here with John is obvious. John never seeks power. He didn't put his name forward to be Lord Commander of the Night's Watch or King of the North, and seemed to accept both roles with a heavy heart. On the eve of the Battle of the Bastards, he gave a moving speech to Melisandre about how he is tired of warfare. It's as if Danny's reignited focus on power and violence in season six is being mirrored by John's increased apathy and world weariness since his resurrection. So where do we go with this? Well, I hope that it should be obvious that even if we do think that Daenerys suffers from mental health issues, this doesn't make her evil. If anything, it should make us emote with her even more. In fact, what we are faced with is a woman of deep contradictions. She is obsessed by gaining the Iron Throne, but all the evidence suggests that she would neither enjoy it nor be good at it were she ever to become queen. And although she is someone who often embraces violence as a first option, she also prioritises the poor and the oppressed. So where will Daenerys' character arc take her? At the moment, Everything seems on course for her to claim the Iron Throne. She has the greatest cavalry in the world in the Dothraki, and perhaps the greatest infantry in the Unsullied. She also has three dragons that are so much more powerful than anything any of her rivals can call upon that it isn't really a fair fight. But I keep finding myself coming back to this moment in her vision in the House of the Undying, the show version rather than the book version that is where the Iron Throne is there within her grasp, after what looks like a dragon attack on King's Landing. But she walks away from it. Will she, over the course of the next two seasons, come to the realisation that ruling Westeros is not her fate? It's not where her talents lie, and it's not actually what she wants. 
in Marine, a lot of the problems were that she was at odds with a lot of the local culture and traditions. But can we expect Westeros to be much different? If the backstory we have for her is to be believed, she has never even been on the mainland of Westeros, being born on Dragonstone, brought up in Braavos, and spending her formative years with the Dothraki. If she forces herself into a position where she knows she can take the Iron Throne, might she then walk away? I think she might. Next week, I will look at how this character arc plays into the whole theme of A Song of Ice and Fire, including what the Song of Ice and Fire actually is and means. What do you think? Do you think that Daenerys is potentially a mad queen? Or a liberating hero? Or perhaps a bit of both? Let me know in the comments below. If you want to know when my next video comes out, then please click on the subscribe button. And if you'd like to support me in producing more videos like this, as well as getting access to more of my content, then please click through to my Patreon page. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for watching. That's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.